Warning, the following may contain sexual imagery, violence, and strong language. This may create a not safe for work environment. Viewer discretion is advised. Previously, at the Mountains of Badness, Hudo Issei, a perverted, super virgin high school student, got killed on his first date by his new girlfriend. And now, the continuation. Welcome at the Mountains of Badness, where I, Nightmare Alpha, present to you the Eldritch Abominations of Literature. Today we continue with our ride through High School DxD and see what happens after Issei is apparently killed. So, heading to the afterlife it is. Life 1. I quit being a human. Part 1. Wake up! Wake up! If you don't wake up, I'm going to k-kiss you! Mm. It's an alarm clock, which wakes you up with a Sundara voice, but it doesn't have a function to wake up its owner from its bed. That owner fell to the floor and has now seen a nightmare. Oh, nice. <laughs> Shameless plug for me. That's me. It's the worst way to wake up. I had that awful dream again. Lately I've been having the same dream. The dream where I was killed by Yuma-chan. Oh god, now he thinks it's a dream. Huh, funny. But since I'm here, alive, it has to be a dream. Wake up, Issei! Mom's voice coming from the stairs, just like every morning. I know, I know, I will get up now. After giving a reply like that, I pick myself up from the floor. Yeah, that's a very smart move. Ha! <sighs> my day is off to a bad start again. I feel so down. I put on my uniform while making a deep sigh. End of part 1. Part 2. I'm off van! I yarn as I leave the house. During the walk to school, I can't help but close my eyes due to the sunlight. Ah, it's so bothersome. Lately, I've been starting to feel weak under the sun. It feels like the sunlight is piercing through my skin, and I can't stand it. Oh yeah, otakus have this problem from time to time that light becomes their enemy, just the normal part of being a nerd. Anyway, the morning sunlight is no good to me. Oh, wow, it's no good to me. Mm-hmm, yep, definitely a great schooler translating this. I can't wake up in the morning at all. Since I haven't been able to wake up lately, my mom has been coming to wake me up every day. On the other hand, I have become more active at night. Ooh, that sounds dirty. There is something inside my body that rises up and makes my tension go high. Oh yeah, definitely something dirty. I've been completely a night per- uh. I've completely become a night person. It's weird. Uh, you're telling me. I often stay up late, but it's a miracle if I'm able to even stay awake till 1 o'clock. Uh, well, some have this problem, but now I can easily stay awake till 3 or 4 o'clock. I've been going to sleep after the sun rises lately, and that has been my daily routine. Mm -hmm. I'm not addicted to online games, nor am I addicted to night shows. Uh, night shows? I don't know what he means, but... Okay... What's happening to my body? It's my brain trying not to sleep so I don't have to see that dream where my girlfriend kills me? Well, could be. Well, that's what I feel personally, so it can't be it. What? What is it? No really, that stands here. But fuck who translates this? It's natural for the body to feel the need to sleep. I feel the need for speed sometimes, but okay. The feeling I have at night, I think it's something completely different from before. I don't know how to explain it, but my body feels pumped and I have a feeling sometime, something mysterious is rising off the depth of my body. 
That's called a boner, bro. We all get bad. So I went out at night to test it. We're wa walking, well, the walking pace of my feet increased, and my heart shook with joy when I blended with the darkness of the night. Okay. I dashed out at night on a whim, and to my surprise, it gave me incredible speed. Sonic the Hedgehog? No, more like Shadow the Hedgehog. No, no, no strike that. That's not a good Sonic reference. If I join the track team, I could easily become the main runner. Also, I don't run out of stamina. Oh, that's good for the ladies. I have so much stamina that I can do a full marathon fun as I'm just jogging. Uh, oh, oh. I became overconfident, and when I sprinted during the day, it was so horrible that I thought my stamina at night was a dream. No, it's an average speed for a high school student. What's an average speed for a high school student? But there is a huge difference when I'm comparing my night self and, and my day self. Oh. I've become weird at night. No, bro. You just adjusted yourself to always be weird. It might sound like a phrase coming from a weird person to say it like this. Oh, yeah, you're not a weird person at all, bro. But the feeling I have at night is being unleashed. And the excitement I have is changing me into a different person. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's definitely a weird thing to say. <clears throat> like I thought the sunlight is giving me a hard time. Okay. Unlike at night, I've become t totally weak during the day. No matter how much I think about it, something is definitely wrong with my body. It's called puberty and it happens to all of us. I can't help but think that my body changed since the day I went on a date with Yuma-chan. End of part 2. Part 3. A private school. Cool academy. That's the school I go to. It's a co-ed school right now, but since it was a girls school until a couple of years ago, there are more girls than boys. Ooh, sounds kinky, I guess. As the grades go down, the numbers of boys increase, but there are still more girls than boys overall. I am a second year high school student, and the ratio of girls and boys in my class are 7 to 3. For third year students, it's 8 to 2. Even now, the girls have a much stronger authority than, bo than boys. The majority of students in the student council are girls, and the student president is also a girl. Hmm. Fitting. Most student council presidents in anime are girls, so I don't mind. It's a school where boys can't stand tall, but I still joined this school. It's a simple story. This place has more girls. That alone is a wonderful thing. Well, I wouldn't call it a wonderful thing, but it happens. The reason why I was able to pass the entrance exam for this school, which is said to be really hard, is due to my perverted guts. So you're just have learned because your penis demands it? Okay. I want to study while being surrounded by girls. Eh, who, didn't, who didn't want this? For that reason alone, I'm currently attending this school. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with being a pervert? Well, because it's well, situationally not useful. It's my life. I won't let anyone argue against me. I'm going to build a harem at this school. Well, well, at least he is uh, ambitious. That is not good. And so that was my mission when I first attended the school. But now I feel depressed. Yeah, because nobody wanted to join. I was naive for thinking I can make two or three girlfriends at this school where the majority of students are girls. Dude, you know, it's hard to have even one girlfriend. Why not start slow? Only one group of good-looking guys are popular and the girls don't even look at me. Meh, I don't know. Meh. To be more precise, they ignore me like trash laying on the floor. Oh, that's bad. Shit! This wasn't my plan. Nonsense. In my plan, I was supposed to get my first girlfriend straight after I entered the school. 
After that, I will have broken up with her and started dating a new girl, and by the time I graduated, heaps of girls were supposed to fight over me in a battle royale. I think that's not how it works. At this rate, my objective will end in a dream. Yeah, bro, I think it will be a dream. A nightmare at that. No pun intended. Wait, is that already a dream? Possibly. What was wrong with it? The era I was born in? The law? Or there's something wrong with me? That sounds like the author is now talking to me. <sighs> I don't want to even think about it. Huh. Fitting, because I don't want to listen about it. Those are the things that go through my mind every day. What a poor life it is. I arrive at my classroom while making a bad sigh and sit down on my chair. Hey buddy, how was the DVD I lent you? It was some good stuff, wasn't it? The bald head guy who spoke to me is my buddy number one, Matsuda. He might look like a sportsman, but he is a pervert who makes sexually harassing comments every day. Ooh, sexual harassment. That's a funny thing to include in a book. He was a sports boy during his time in junior high school, where he broke many records. But he's in the photo club now. He's really open about his ambition of wanting to take photos of every pair of a girl's body through the camera lens. Every part, okay. His nickname is the perverted Baldi and the sexually harassing paparazzi. I think all paparazzi are sexually harassing, but yeah, that's just me. Phew, the wind sure was strong this morning. Thanks to that, I was able to get a good view of a girl's panties. Panty shot implied. The guy with the glasses who was trying to act cool is my buddy number two, Motohama. He has a special ability called Scouter that lets him get the numerical values of a girl's measurement through his glasses. Wow, that's a specific Dragon Ball reference here. Along with a special body where his power level plummets down when he takes off his glasses. What? What's that for a sentence? I don't know. His nickname is the Perverted Glasses and the Free Size Scouter. These, these two are my evil bodies. Oh, I see an evil empire of boobs erupting suddenly. Seriously, seeing these two faces in the morning really makes me feel down. I feel sick. Don't worry, I also feel sick about this. I got some nice stuff. Matsuda opens his bag and tips out the things inside his bag without any hesitation. Two times back in a sentence. That's not good. Buy a thesaurus. The books and DVDs which are being piled on my desk have suggestive titles. Ooh, suggestive. Like riding the black unicorn or something like that. Eee! A small scream comes from a girl far away from us. Well, of course, she will react like that. After all, something like this is happening in the morning. What I hear next from the girls are discriminating comments like You guys are the worst! And DIE, filthy brats! I think we're in the right to do that. I mean, porn discs on the morning, meh. Silence! This is our entertainment, girls, and kids should look away and keep away. Or else, I will rape all of you inside of my head! Yeah, no, thank you for that little picture. Your words are vulgar as always, Matsuda-kun. Not long ago, I would have said, Wow, where did you get these treasures from? With sparkling eyes at the things piled on my desk. But since I've been in a terrible spate every morning lately, I'm not in the mood. Matsuda sighs while looking at my dull face. Hey, 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 why do you have a face like that when there are so many treasures right in front of you? You haven't been in the mood lately, weird. It's definitely weird. You aren't the same as before. Motohama also says that while poking his glasses as if he finds me boring. I also want to say, wow, where did you get these from? Are you trying to turn me into a monkey? But I've been lacking energy lately. Do you have some kind of illness? No, it can't be. There's no way that you, the manifestation of all sexual desires, would fall sick. 
the manifestation of all sexual desires? What in the fresh hell is that? Motohama makes a rude comment about me. He's really a rude guy. Yeah, I guess that. that's his stick. Then Matsumada makes a gesture with his hand as if he realized something. Oh, it's that. It's the side effect of that hallucination about the imaginary girlfriend you have. Yuma-chan, was it? Don't you guys seriously not remember Yuma-chan? Both of them look at me with sympathetic eyes at my question. Like we said before, we seriously don't know her. You should really get a doctor to check you, right Motohama? Yeah, I'm going to repeat this again, but we weren't introduced to a girl called Yuma-chan. They always act like this every time I ask about them about Yuma-chan. I thought they were just teasing me, but after talking to them seriously, I found out that that wasn't the case. I definitely remember introducing them to Yuma-chan. They said things like, How come a beauty like her is Issei's girlfriend? And there must be a system error happening in this world. Issei, you haven't done anything illegal, have you? And kept making rude comments. Also, there is a very bad sentence structure here that makes no fucking sense. I remember I was getting cocky and said, you guys should get a girlfriend as well. Oh no, bro. Oh no, not that number. I remember that time very clearly, but they don't remember it. No, what they don't even remember is Yuma-chan. As if Amano Yuma never existed. As if the time I spend with Yuma-chan never happened. Like these two said, it feels like it was just my imagination. Yeah, well, could happen to the best of us. Like these two proved, there is no record of Yuma's mobile number or email address in my mobile phone. Was it deleted from the memory? Did somebody delete it? That can't be. There is no way. I would delete it, so who did it? I called the number that I memorized in my head, but that phone number wasn't currently in use. So does that mean she doesn't exist? Was it all in my imagination? Something crazy like that isn't possible. You haven't seen the Eldritch Abominations I have seen, so believe it, it's possible. I want to deny it, but apart from my memory, there is no evidence to prove that she existed. If I think about it, I don't know her home address. She was a student from another school. I found the school where they wore the same uniform as her, so I asked the students from that school about Yuma-chan. But there was n wasn't a student fitting her description. She wasn't there. So who was my girlfriend? Who was I dating? Well, I guess it was, uh, don't know, the big the great Cthulhu or something like that. So the dream I've been having is just a fantasy that I made up? Was I talking to Matsuda and Motohama about my dream as if it was reality? What I am? A pervert? Yes, yes, you're clearly a pervert. I clearly remember her face, you know. There's something wrong about all of this. Like the strange strength I get at night, something is definitely wrong. But what is it? While I'm thinking about the past incidents, Matsuda rests his, ha his hands on my shoulder. Well, we are in the middle of our youth, so something weird stuff like that can happen to us. Okay then, you guys, come over to my place after school. Let's watch my secret collection together. That is an excellent idea, Matsuda-kun. We should definitely invite Issei-kun as well. Oh, of course I'm going to invite him, Motohama-kun. We are high school boys who move with sexual desires. If we don't do anything perverted, it would be disrespectful to our parents who gave birth to us. I guess that's kind of... uh... what? The two of them smirked lecherously. Perverts. No matter how you look at them, they are just some perverted creeps. And sadly, I am one of them. Well, you can change that, it's not impossible. Well, never mind. I also live for these kind of things. Ah, there is my pervert. 
Okay then, today we won't hold back. We get fizzy drinks and chips while watching porn DVDs, proclaimed he loudly in a class full of girls. Yes, that's the stuff of legends. I say because I can't be bothered to think. Oh yeah, that's is it, that's definitely the issue we, is we know. That's the spirit, we need to enjoy our youth even more! Matsumada and Motohama are getting all excited. I will leave the incident about Yuma-chan on hold. I need to take a break sometimes as well. Today I will forget about that incident and get hooked into porn like how a boy of our ages does. Yeah, that's how natural high schoolers deal with that porn. It happened after we made the plan for the afternoon. There was a crimson color that caught my attention. Oh no, 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 not another crimson, crimson overlord. I'm still not over the last one. A brilliant crimson color. Oh god, here it goes. The schoolyard can be seen from the classroom window. I have my eyes glued towards a certain girl. The girl with crimson red hair. Our school idol. Those beauty is beyond a, norm of a normal humans. Oh, that sounds so weird. Her slim proportions aren't even the shape of a Japanese girl. Maybe because she isn't. Of course, she isn't a Japanese girl after all. See, I told you. I heard people say that she's from Northern Europe. Okay. Seems like she's attending a Japanese high school due to her father's work. Seems It seems like is now used four times already. Use another sentence structure. Anyone will get their heart taken by her after witnessing her beauty. No, I resist. Rias Grimory. She's a third year school student of this school. So that makes her my senior. Oh no, senpai, please notice me not. When I realize it, everyone, including me, is looking at her as well, both boys and girls. What? Mats Matsumada and Motohama are also looking at her. This happens every morning. Everyone looks at her when she walks past them. Some people stop walking, others stop talking. Everyone turns around and looks at her. It's L'Oreal, because you're worth it. The wind gently blows her crimson hair while every student in the school watches her. Her long crimson hair, which comes down to her hips, make her surround like it's colored in crimson as well when the wind blows her hair. That is an odd sentence structure. Also too much crimson! Her beautiful skin, which is white as snow, is remarkable. Yeah, that's the reason we only spent one sentence on that. Beautiful. That's the only word to describe her in one word. Double use of word in one sentence. That's the only word you need to describe her. Uh, maybe? I was also fascinated by her beauty and noble atmosphere. Can this just stop already? I'm so fascinated by her that I'm always stop what I'm doing every time I see her. But lately, the way I see her uh, has changed. She's, de she's definitely beautiful, but she's too beautiful. Oh god, it's this otherworldly beautiful thing I hate. I start to feel a little bit scared of her beauty and fear her from the bottom of my heart. Oh, now he's feared of beauty. Oh my. I don't know why I start to feel like this, but I've started to feel like this ever since Yuma-chan's disappearance. Double off, I don't know why you feel like this. This is just not... No, no, no. Then her eyes move. Her clear blue eyes grasp hold of me. Huh. I feel as if my heart is being grappled by her. Uh, well, making a post-grab check. What is this feeling? Is that feeling you get? Is that the feeling you get when someone who's more superior to you is standing in front of you? Don't know, never had this feeling before. Well, one time, but we don't want to talk about my boss. She narrows her blue eyes, and it seems like she's smiling. Is she looking at me? I thought this million times of girls, but no, it's never the case. It can't be. I don't have any connection to her. Then, 
I suddenly remember something from a dream I had. At the end of a dream, there was a person with crimson hair who spoke to me. The person who seems to be gentle, but also cold. While I'm comparing her with a person of my, from my dream, she's already out of my sight. End of part 3. Oh, God! Ah! I think we should take a break here. Firstly, because this crimson overload is just too much. I, I need to ease my pain something. Something nice. Something with things I understand. So I will be back after I have read the Necronomicon or something. So I was Nightmare Alpha for you at the Mountains of Badness, and I hope to see you next week when we continue this dive into complete insanity. See you next time. Oh, you're still here? That means one of three things. One, you liked what you heard. If that's the case, I recommend that you show that by using the small thumbs up button below. Two, you wanted to see how deep the rabbit hole goes and stayed till the end. In that case, you might want to see how it continues by pressing that subscribe button. Or three, you fall asleep while listening. I wish you sweet dreams if that's the case and hope you come back for more sleep-worthy content. If you want to know something or have issues with what I'm doing, you might want to leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to call me an asshole in the comments. And now for something else. Recommendations. Firstly, you should check out Blasperus on DeviantArt. He provided me with the show's art. You can find him by clicking on the top annotation. Secondly, I recommend this episode of The Anime Room, where Shintai, James Hansen and me talked about high school DxD in what could be seen as the origin story of this show. Click on the left if you're interested. And last but not least, we have the most recent episode of HPMP, the JRPG podcast, where we include me talk about Persona 5. As always, click on the right if you want to see that. So that was it for this week, see you next Thursday with more... badness.